In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a seamless texture that can repeat in the vertical and horizontal direction. To do that, we're going to use the offset filter. Then we can use these textures in an application like Maya to texture three-dimensional objects. Both of these images that I'm using are from Wikipedia and the resulting texture files are available for you to use for any purpose. The texture files are linked in the description of the video. First, let's do a simple texture. Here I have a picture of sand. For textures in Maya, we need to think in powers of two. For example, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096. And the textures want to be square. So the first step is to crop this image to be square. Select the crop tool and set it to square. Then we can accept the crop by pressing the check mark. Now we have a square image, but we need to make it look seamless from side to side. Select Filter, then down under Other, select Offset. We want to make sure that we select the vertical and horizontal lines to be offset. Here you can see the vertical line and the horizontal line. I like to move it down more towards the center of the image. That way I have plenty of space to work. And for a simple image like this, probably we can just use the healing brush. So I'm going to try that by just swiping straight across. That does an awfully good job of seamlessly blending the texture. Let's try that again in the vertical direction. Now I don't see any seams in the texture and we're ready to save this. So what we need to do is again, make sure it's a power of two. So we'll go to image, image size. And here we have an image that is 960. We could either round down and go to 512 or round up and go to 1024. So I'm going to round up to 10. 24 to keep that resolution and then press OK. Now I have a square seamless texture image that's the scale of a power of two. I'll go File, Save As, and I want to save it in my Maya project as an IFF. Make sure you save it in your source images and go ahead and label it. I'm going to label this one Sand, Sand Texture. Save it as an IFF and select the Maya format and select OK. Now we can use this in our Maya project. Let's look at a more difficult example. So here I have a close-up of some sand grains. For this image, what I want to do first is select some of these larger objects to be able to use to make my texture seamless. Grab the quick selection tool and select some of these objects. Then press Control or Command C and then Control or Command V to paste. You'll see it over here in the layer panel. Then select the background again and select another object. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be close. Then Command C or Control C, copy and paste. Let's do that again. Remember, you need to select the background image again. Now I'll get this object, copy, paste. Select the background again, then I'll get this object. Remember, you can press the Option or the Alt key while painting and it will deselect from your selection. Now copy and paste. Scroll down, select the background again, I'll get this object. Copy and paste. Make sure I have the background selected. Let's get this object. Copy and paste. And let's get those two bottom ones as well. So this one here, copy and paste. And then lastly, let's get this one. And remember, hold the Alt key or the Option key while you drag. Let go to add to the selection. And then quickly, you can make a selection. Copy and paste. So now over in my layers panel, let me drag this up so we can see more. I have all of these here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to group them, pressing Control G or Command G, and I'll call this Shells 1. Then I'm going to hide the background, and I need to bring all of these shells into the middle so I can just move these in. It doesn't matter where, but I want them in the center because I'm going to crop the image and I don't want to lose any of this information when I crop it. So now I have those shells all in the middle. Then we can click the Crop tool, and we want to make it square. So now it's cropped square, and I still have my shells. I'm going to now duplicate this group, and we'll call it Shells 2. I'll hide Shells 2. Now I need to offset the background. Select the background, go to Filter, Filter Other Offset. We can decide if we want to do both of them at the same time, or do the vertical one first. To help move everything around a bit more, I'm going to do the horizontal offset first. So then I'll show my shells one, and then I can just start moving these shells around. 
to where I have them in my image and I think it looks good. We can rotate them and put them under each other. And again, you don't have to use all of the images. So if there's one you don't like, just hide it. And for example, maybe I'll rotate this one around and maybe that one's too dark to have right on the edge. So I'll put this one down at the edge and then this one could be in the middle. Now that the shells are covering everything, I'll select that group in the background, right click, merge layers. So now all those are merged into the background. And now I'm gonna do one more offset. So I'll go filter, other, offset. This time I'll set the horizontal to zero and then I'll move the vertical offset over. So now I just need to do this vertical offset and I'll press okay, show these shells and now I can move them around to see how this all should go together. And then when I'm happy with how that looks, for example, I'll probably move that shadow to be underneath. We can also change the layer order. So if I want this one to be higher up to overlap something, I can bring it up, move that over to overlap. How about this one here? We can move down underneath, maybe move this one like that. So now we have all of the shells together. So then I can select this, select both of them, right click, merge layers. So now the layers are merged and I have a seamless texture. The last thing to do is set the image size, image, image size. Here we are at 768. So I could go down to 512 or up to uh, 1024. This time I'll go down to 512. So that's a square image at a power of two and I'll press okay. Then I can save it as an IFF and I'll call this one shell texture and as a Maya format. In addition, we can also use Photoshop to create quick bump maps. So if you click on filter, then 3D, and you can generate a bump map. So Photoshop will make a nice bump map to give just some definition to what you're looking at. You can see a preview here, and if you want to invert the height, you can do that depending on the software that you're using and what you need to be vertical. For this one, I'm going to leave the height the same because we want these dark areas to go down in Maya. And I'll press OK. And now I can file, save as. Again, we want to save this file in the source image and we'll say shell texture bump map. And we can do the same thing for the sand texture. We can go filter, 3D, generate bump map. And now we'll have a bump map that we can use on our sand to make it more realistic. Press OK, then file. Then go to File, Save As, Sand Texture, Bump Map. Now we can use these textures in the 3D modeling program of our choice.